happening gamers, Stella Chung here, and we have a lot of gaming news for you. I'm your host for today, April 24th, and usually I'd be hosting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday this week, but I'll be out of town, so I'll miss you all. But that won't stop us from delivering you all the latest in gaming news from our other lovely hosts. Speaking of, in today's Daily Fix, Horizon Forbidden West is getting a sequel, Diablo 4 is getting one last final open beta weekend, tips on how not to commit war crimes in games, and Call of Duty is getting a new game, but not the kind you think. I know Horizon Forbidden West's new DLC, Burning Shores, only just dropped last week on the 19th, but we have more game update news for Horizon fans. Horizon developer Guerrilla Games reorganized their internal management structure and the updated roster on their website showed that a Horizon Forbidden West sequel was in the works. Guerrilla posted a message on their site about their studio director and executive producer Angie Smith starting a new role as head of development strategy at PlayStation Studios after nearly 20 years at Guerrilla Games. The post reveals that the management team that will lead New Horizon Games now consists of studio veterans Joel Eschler, Hella Schmidt, and Jan Bart Van Beek. The message also said, quote, We have full confidence in our new leadership as they steer Guerrilla towards a bright future, expanding the world of Horizon with Aloy's next adventure and our exciting online project. This statement correlates with what creative director Matthias De Jong previously said about how Forbidden West had been set up with a cliffhanger to lead into the plot of a third game. Yang also went on to say that Horizon is about uncovering the mysteries of the new and old world, and that, quote, there is plenty of backstory that we can tap into to develop new storylines and create new mysteries from what we've already established. So it seems they have a pretty solid idea of what they want to make for Horizon's third game. As for the online game Gorilla mentioned in their most recent post, there's an online multiplayer Horizon game in development that's supposed to include a brand new cast of characters and a unique stylized look. What that means, we'll have to wait to find out, but it's so great to know that this is all confirmed and very real and is in development currently. What do you think the next Horizon story will focus on? Give us your best video game pitches. I have even more good news for everyone. If you've been fiending for more Diablo 4 like I have, you'll be excited to know that Diablo is coming back with one last open beta. In their live stream last Friday, Blizzard announced that a Server Slam open beta would be free for anyone to play. As the name suggests, the Server Slam is supposed to test Diablo servers to ensure the developers can create as smooth of a launch as possible. This open beta will release Friday, May 12th at 12 p.m. PST and close at 12 p.m. PST on Sunday. If you played the first two betas, none of your characters or progress will carry over, unfortunately. Also, none of the progress you make in this Server Slam will be carried over to the official game launch either. But if you defeat the world boss Ashava, you'll be rewarded with an exclusive mount trophy in the full game when it does release. Since the last two betas, there have been a lot of balance changes and adjustments made to the game and classes, so it'll be a great opportunity to see how those feel and give additional feedback to Blizzard about Diablo 4. The max cap for leveling this open beta is level 20 instead of 25, so it's less of a grind than before. The server slam will be open to all players on any platform, and it also includes two-player couch co-op on consoles if you want to get your siblings in on the demon slaying. The server slam is in two weeks, so make sure to clear your calendars for that weekend. Did you know that you could commit war crimes in video games without knowing? Well, okay, so it's more on the developer side, but let me explain it to you. Video games are not allowed to use the Red Cross logo as it is an official protected logo under the Geneva Convention. In fact, no one is allowed to use the Red Cross logo unless explicitly permitted by that Geneva Convention. The official wording in the 1929 Geneva Convention states, the emblem of the Red Cross on a white ground and the words Red Cross or Geneva Cross shall not be used either in time of peace or in time of war, except to protect or to indicate the medical formations and establishments and the personnel and material protected by the convention. The Red Cross emblem signifies neutrality and means don't shoot. Whatever person, vehicle, building, or equipment is not part of the fight and this respect is officially protected by the convention. It's not an official trademark, but it is an emblem protected by international treaties who protect those who go into war zones without the ability to fight, who are only there to provide assistance. So what does this have to do with video games? Well, we all see med packs and healing items in video games, and if you look closely, you can see that those icons are not a red cross, since that would mean the developers were violating the convention. Among Us was actually guilty of that for a brief moment when it was pointed out that the med base sections on their maps had the red cross emblem. That was quickly changed to blue crosses. 
It's an extremely easy symbol to associate with health, especially in video games, and not a lot of people know about the specifics around the emblem and the importance of it in the actual Geneva Convention. The International Committee of the Red Cross recently announced a Play by the Rules initiative to try and raise awareness for it. Play by the Rules focuses on the awareness around the rules of war and maintaining humanity in armed conflicts. There are also specific rules on what people are allowed to do in warfare. The Red Cross is challenging FPS players to follow that real-life rule set, translate it to gaming like not killing non-violent NPCs, not targeting civilian buildings, sharing medkits with friendlies and enemies if possible. So far, Fortnite and Arma 3 have officially lined up to support Play by the Rules, and other content creators who play Escape from Tarkov, Call of Duty Warzone, PUBG, and Rainbow Six Siege have followed the rules of war in the challenge. It's an interesting concept and honestly kind of a fun challenge. Take a look at the full rules and see if you can maintain the challenge for a day. Speaking of FPS games, another Call of Duty game was announced, but it's not an FPS. In fact, it's not even a video game. It's a Call of Duty board game. Literally titled Call of Duty The Board Game, Activision's shooter series is coming to tabletop editions in 2024 with an official Kickstarter campaign launching this fall. This tabletop Call of Duty game is coming from Arcane Wonders, the company behind Sheriff of Nottingham and Onitama. The campaign is set within the rebooted Modern Warfare timeline and will feature maps and weapons from the games. The gameplay revolves around players having to plan movement and battle around each other, and it goes so far as to even outline on the map where you can lose your opponent's line of sight. It's a pretty cool concept, basically being a battlefield tabletop sim or just a really violent game of chess, since it revolves around outsmarting and outmaneuvering your opponent to win. The Call of Duty board game will be 50 US dollars and is two player, though there are plans for this board game to have a live service aspect with additional content being added over time. Creative director Walter Barber noted that crowdfunding was the only way pre-painted miniatures could be included in the core game. This board game is definitely not something I'd go out and buy, but I mean, I'd be down to play it if I could rent it from a shop. Are you going to be playing in the Diablo 4 server slam? If you are, just be aware that the queue times to get into the game are definitely going to be extra long this time, since it's literally to test the server capabilities. But now that you're all caught up on the news, check out our final Redfall preview before it launches May 2nd. I'm so excited to play that game with my friends. Download the IGN app, follow us on your socials even though Twitter is dying, and subscribe to The Daily Fix on Snapchat. I'm Stella Chung, keep on gaming, and I'll see you next time.